is never manifested. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As long as the old is tolerated, the new is never manifested. As long as the old is celebrated, the new is never manifested. Until you know what you hate, you don't know what you like. Until you know what you don't want, you don't know what you want. And in this life, I discover that you don't get what you, you don't necessarily get what you deserve. You get what you demand. You don't necessarily get what you desire. You get what you demand. I desire money does not put money in your pocket. You place a demand. If you have money in the bank, then you place a demand for it. Please be seated. So it's very, very important. I'm not going to be talking so much tonight. The old must be refused before the new can come. Secondly, said, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? So, things don't change by choice. They change by force. It shall spring forth. Now, let me say it like this. Change resisting forces must be overcome before the new can manifest. Change resisting forces must be overcome. Mean for every every level you find yourself, there are forces hindering the next level. Every level you found yourself, whether it is a spiritual level, a financial level, whether it's a career level, a destiny level, there are forces who have sworn to keep you at that level. God gave the children of Israel the land of Canaan, the land of promise, but the giants were there. In other words, who are you to come here? It was at that point that Caleb told Joshua, give me the mountain. Even if there are anarchists there, I'm going to deal with them. But I must take the land. I am here with an anointing to deal with the giants.
If what you are looking for happens, how does it look like? Yes, sir. Because what you cannot define cannot be found. What you cannot define cannot be delivered. When it happens, how does it look like? I want church to grow. How does it look like when it grows? I want to break even. What does break even mean? A very clear picture. God does not assume the needs of man. God must confirm the desires of man. So he saw a blind man saying, have mercy on me. And he said, what do you want? He didn't want to assume that the blind man was looking for sight. He may be looking for money. What do you want me to do for you? So he said, that time I receive my sight. All right? If it is sight, you can have the sight. God does not assume the needs of man. He must confirm the needs of man. It must be clear to you. The vision of what you want. God built for himself a mega sanctuary called the glory dome. Some of you are aware of it. It did not happen by chance. It didn't happen by wishing. It happened by clear, calculated, and visionary process. It, it was clear. It was clear what we wanted. From the design stage to every stage. And when it happened, we well, were not surprised. We would have been surprised if it didn't happen. Take your seat. You must possess a clear picture of desire change. And number four, you must maintain the mindset of preferred result. Now, the picture should be clear, but the picture is an occasional thing. The mindset is a permanent thing. Once you know what you want, let it remain on your mind. Am I communicating? The third point says you must know what you want. This point is saying let it remain in the mind. He said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Your life practically issues from your heart. It takes a loaded heart to have a loaded life. What weighs in your heart determines the weight of your life. Am I communicating at all? There are people who think about good things occasionally. God is not talking about those who think about it occasionally. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that you can ask or imagine. What you can't imagine cannot emerge. I hear what I'm saying. So, so it just that's the difference between those who have results consistently and those who have results occasionally. Those who have results consistently, the the, the result, the desire remains there uh, as a resident occupant of their mentality. Hello. He said the thought of the diligent work that was Proverbs twenty one verse five. Then that only to plenteousness. In the mind of the diligent, only plenty flows. One day we are coming to church in the morning, during our uh, from in, in our in our former site. The thought of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. That is why plenty is around him, because plenty flows in his mind. What? Is real to his mind became real to his life. Am I communicating at all? What he's seen around him, he has been seeing it all along. Because what you don't see coming never comes. You saw it coming all along. Am I communicating at all? One day we're coming to church, our former site in the real church, and I saw people flowing like water towards the church. I saw vehicles queuing. Towards the church premises, I saw people running to a 6 a.m. service on Saturday morning. My wife was sitting beside me. And I told her, I said, be careful what you think. And be careful what occupies your mind. Because good or bad, you will experience it. Because that sight that I saw was a picture that has resided, that had resided for years. I saw people trooping to church and saw vehicles moving. According to scripture, 
Before Jesus went to a, a particular place, the Bible said the people overwent him. They outwent him. When they heard he was going to Capernaum, they reached there before he arrived. That's the mystery of people coming to church before church starts. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Let what you are trusting God for reside. Don't let it be an occasional occurrence in the mind. Thought are things. That was number four. You must maintain the mindset of the preferred result, the preferred change. Number five, you must con consistently declare your expected outcome. Consistent declaration. I cannot die here. We cannot remain here. Something bigger is happening. Something greater is happening. Something stronger is happening. We, we moved to our new site and started running services there. And I told the people that the time will come where the new site where we are now, the glory dome, will be over flooded, running many services, and where we have left. We'll also be running many services there. <laughs> the way you used to see. We moved to the new place. Everybody moved there. And then the old old place started service again. As at last Sunday, they were a little under 2,000. At the old place. <laughs> As at last Sunday. I said, okay, there is a new place, and then the old place is, is, is started with 300, 400. And then I told the people before, I kept saying, I said, no matter how big the sanctuary that God will use us to build for Him, people will always sit outside. So far, we have had overflowing the, the new place three times the dedication, the night feature. Then they cross over night and four times. And the nation's worship, that's why. Please take your seat in the presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Amen. Consistently declare. At times you may look stupid. God saw darkness, is, he said light. He spoke light. He didn't say, let the weak say I'm not weak. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. Don't mention the weakness at all. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? He didn't say, let the weak say I am not weak. No. Joel chapter 3 verse 10. He said, ignore the weakness and declare the strength. Pretend and behave like the weakness did not exist. Say what you want. Don't say the situation. Say the expectation. It's God speaking to anybody here. That was how we get. We started talking and people thought we were mad. And now the madness is clear to everybody. That the madness of God is better than the sanity of the devil. Somebody say amen. amen. Is God speaking to somebody? Amen. How many of you are going to speak tonight? Amen. Each of us say, It is well with me. Amen. Everything is working. Well this land shall favor me. Amen. I cannot be here. I cannot be frustrated here. My life cannot end in shame, in mockery, here. In the name of Jesus, I am going somewhere, and my destiny shall happen speedily by fire. Take your seat and get to the door. It's going to begin to everybody at Consistently declare, you must consistently declare your expected outcome. He said, as you have spoken in my ears. Numbers 14, 28. 
as you speak in my ears, so will I do. Just say it to my hearing. God is saying, and I will enjoy this enforced. That is number five. Number six, trust God for divine direction for necessary action. In this desired change I am expecting, in my life moving to the next level, my business moving to the next level, my, my marriage moving to the next level, the ministry moving to the next level, what strategic steps should I take? What ministry outreaches should I embark upon? What definite administrative changes must I embark upon? What kind of uh, recruitment or staff, whatever, should I embark upon? Yes, Lord, I know something must change, but before there are reactions, there must be actions. What actions? What should I do? If you remember in the book of Second Kings chapter 3, verse 15, when there was the need for the wilderness and for, for the army of, of Israel to have water to drink, there was a need for direction. And when Elisha ministered to the Lord, then God said, make this valley full of ditches and then the water shall come. If it will take you three days of waiting on the Lord, 72 hours, blasting tongues for five to seven hours non-stop, within any of those days times three, go through the book of Acts of the Apostles, where direction is very, very clear for people who need a direction, and so on and so forth. And asking God with your hearts, open your spirit, open your mind, open. My life must shift to the next level. But what step should I take? What move should I make? What am I doing I am not meant to do? What should I do that I am not doing? Father, show me something. Open my eyes to something. Open my ears to something. Open my spirit to something. Open my understanding to something. Now, speak about that. And I am here with the mantle of divine direction. I told people when it was time to marry, God sent me to one person in this world. I never went to two, three, four, five people. No, just one. And that's the one I'm married to. Then we are the Lord's garden. I saw the place in the revelation of the night about 10 years before we saw the physical land. Which landmark? That is, if, if you see this, that's the land. Hallelujah! Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet? And several other things that. We are not claiming anything but just the help of God. Tonight, someone will have a revelation. And tonight, the angel and the Lord shall give you a, an encounter, a directive encounter, a directive encounter. Before the next three days, before the next one week, God will show you what to do. Stay Hallelujah, take your seat in the presence of the Lord. So you, 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 you trust God for strategic direction for necessary action. And then number seven, after you have received that, that direction, embark upon massive drastic action. Massive drastic action. That is, God has shown you what to do. Do it times ten. Uh, massive, drastic action. He told you, try and make sure at least ten people come to church every Sunday. Multiply it by ten. Massive, drastic action. There is a, a degree of restlessness that prevents a man from being arrested in destiny. Amen. Massive, drastic action. It takes the extra to see the extraordinary. Yes. You don't do ordinary things and get of extraordinary results. You need to do extra things. Uh, you need to go the extra mile to see the extra height. Am I communicating? Yes. Don't just do the regular things everybody is doing. And think that you can be successful and think that you can reach everywhere. No, no. Do, do it massively. Do it crazily. Do it mentally. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it aggressively. Do it, do it audaciously. Do it, do it voluminously. <laughs> you know, 
when our church started, you were there. We were always very eager to go out to do church service on Sunday morning at the stadium. We were only five, uh, five, three years old. We rent Eagle Square on Sunday morning. For Sunday morning service. <laughs> I might come on the go to the place they call the open. The Eagle Square place is the place where it's a national square where presidential handovers take place and those kind of big independent day celebrations as well. Oh, that's where we were. We were just a few people. The place is not covered as generally so. We sit on the sun. Our heart was desiring something big. Yes. Yes. Then we went to the national stadium, 65,000 seater. Stadium. We went there for three consecutive months in the night on, on, on the Friday until the government said they can't give it for religious purposes anymore. Then we vowed in that place that we shall build our own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that at that time we were wondering what, what is all these people and they just sat down. Just did you know, mega things. Extra things, oversized things. You know that it is better to buy a shoe a bit bigger than a leg than to buy one. Yes. <laughs> the one that is smaller than your leg will just against your life. The other one is more manageable. That's why you can put things inside. <laughs> Don't do things, don't constrain your life, don't restrain your life, don't, don't restrict your life. Break out of the box. I prophesy to somebody here in the name that is above every day. God, your God, and my God is shifting. Is it watching you? Is it pleasing you? In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Amen. Embark upon massive, drastic action. And they went and the Lord went with them. Amen. If you are not went in, how do you want God to went with you? Mark <laughs> chapter 16, verse 20. And they went and the Lord went with them. God moves with movers. Yes. <laughs> So you must be a mover. You must be a mover for God to move. You must be a shaker for God to shake things. I like that when you get in the I said, so, 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 so there's just this. Ensure that you, you take very massive, drastic action. But finally, maintain, permanently maintain optimism, positivism. Enthusiasm and excitement permanently. Let no devil catch you down. Permanently maintain optimism, positivism, enthusiasm, excitement. You say you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Amen. Psalm 55 from verse 10. Sorry, Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10. If you have it, please show it on the screen quickly for the sake of time. For as the rain comes, now go to verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth from out of my mouth. Yes, then go to verse 12. Very, very fast. Say, for you shall go, yes, verse 12 now. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. Is it move with positivity, positivism, optimism, enthusiasm, excitement, resilience, momentum? And the mountains and the hills shall scatter and break before you. They shall dissolve, disintegrate, dissipate. Stand up on your feet. Say, nothing can stand before your excitement. Nothing can stand before your positivism, before your enthusiasm, before your resilience, 
nothing can stand before the man that is decided not to be cast down. Whatever weighs you down, slows you down. To be weighed down is to be slowed down. To be weighed down is to be tied down. When you agree to be weighed down, you have agreed to be tied down. When you agree to be weighed down, you have agreed to be slowed down. Find the reason. Permanently find the reason for excitement. To him that is joined to the living. That's right. For as long as you have life, you have hope. A living dog is better than a dead man. A living tenant is better than a dead land. A living dog is better than a dead land. It doesn't matter whatever the status is. <laughs> if you are alive, you are better than anybody who has high rich for any life. And for as long as life is in place, the possibilities of your destiny is intact. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Drink these eight capsules. <laughs> Drink these eight capsules and deal with chronic stagnation syndrome, CSS. Drink these six capsules. Be sure that you refuse the old. Ensure that you fight change-resisting forces. That you possess that picture that is clear. And you maintain in your mindset that flow of results. Just there. And you consistently declare, even in the face of those who mock you, that your life will remain where they have seen it. And consistently trust for divine direction. Steps to take, moves to make, actions, and then take those actions. Delayed obedience is worse than disobedience. You move sharp, you move urgent, you move aggressive. I am praying in my study room by 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. And I got instant direction. That needed immediate action and pick the call. You, you are the account officer. You, you are the top. We are moving, making this move now. You'll get the details in the morning. But move. Yeah. Intercessory coordinator, so and so person, this prayer point is to be anchored now. No. Now, today, a set of people are taking a three days fast on this subject. In those days, I used to wait till morning to go to the office. But I was waiting too late. Divine ideas are time specific. You strike the iron when it is hot. I like communicating like that. It's a new season for somebody. Did you receive something tonight? Did you receive something tonight? Lift up your hands and appreciate them for this of tonight. Appreciate him for what? Shoko bakata kazaka yagata kazaka. Go ahead and worship him. Go ahead and honor him. Go ahead and adore him. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we are the sign. Blessed be you. Shoko bakata kazaka. Go ahead, open your mouth and speak to in Jesus' name, just a few prayers. Number one, Lord, help me to react against the old. I am a few. Every old issue tied to my life. I react. I refuse. I resist. Now, open 
directement à ce là La
Let that anointing change something in my life. And for those who want to rededicate themselves to Jesus, or you want your sins forgiven, or you want to make your way right with God, you can come forward quickly and I'll pray for you. While, this, while the general prayers go on, you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, you want forgiveness for your sins, you want to be born again, or you want to rededicate your life, you want a, a sinful habit broken. You want an addiction destroyed. You want something positive to happen for you. You quickly carry your Bibles and your bags and come from here. And I'm going to pray for you. You want to rededicate your life to God. Your spiritual fire is down. Spiritual life is down. Quickly come forward. Whatever I've been saying, lift your hands and begin to express to God what you desire now. souls 
I ask that the hand of the enemy be broken of their lives, that the grace to live for God be released for you. I'm going to pray last prayer because of the service tonight is meant to be the introduction of this and then just a word of greeting. I will be ministering in tents at the Rock program tomorrow. And then everyone, please do everything you can to be there. Lift up your two hands.
is over. A life changing encounter. And in the next seven days, a life changing encounter. Seven shall be true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Say the Lord is here Please come, please come, please come, please come, please come, please come, please Lift up your hands and let's give it praise. Let's give it praise. Shakura le kusi ala basa kusa la mudes. Israta kwate le le kwata le la 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 sha. I wish somebody would give me a praise and let's appreciate it.